blocking the chair thrown at the other assistant principal, he threw a wooden hanger at me, but I couldn't stop it fast enough. The hanger hit me in my right eye. Both physically and emotionally. Kendra Rogers, holding hands with her husband Eugene, followed by family, walks into the Corsicana ISD boardroom, reliving August 15th, the urgent call for help at Collins Intermediate in a classroom for students with behavioral issues, the teacher trying to calm an out-of-control student. When I arrived, the teacher and students were outside the classroom. One student was holding his... All right, what's up with it, y'all? So look, man, I'm back again with another video. And look, I done ran across a situation that's crazy as hell, and it's not getting the proper attention that it should get. But, you know, before we get into the video, I do want to start this off the correct way with some positivity. I want to tell y'all that I do appreciate y'all for rocking with me consistently. And even if you just became a supporter recently, I'm talking to you as well. I hope that everything is okay with you physically, mentally, and spiritually. And I wish y'all nothing but the best in every aspect of your life. And also, I do have a ticket sale going on that's a double, triple, and quadruple ticket sale. So basically, you can get you know double triple even quadruple the amount of tickets that you would normally get on a regular day or on a regular sale you can get double or triple or quadruple the amount now and if you don't know what i'm talking about i have a 2025 chevy Trax rs that i'm raffling off in the next couple of weeks to one of my supporters and i'm also giving away a thousand dollars to four different people i'm gonna divide that up between y'all and uh yeah man the winner will be announced on live with the winners so yeah y'all might want to go down there and get y'all some tickets i might extend it a little bit more the whole entire raffle because i need certain things and a lot of y'all are asking me to, you know, give y'all some time to buy y'all tickets and things like that, which is cool with me. So, yeah, we might do that, but we're going to get into all of that later. But, yeah, y'all need to jump on this sale while y'all can because it ain't going to last. I'm going to go ahead and take it back to the original prices, you know. So, yeah, go ahead and take the opportunity and get you some tickets. But other than that, let's get into the situation so we can talk about it in totality. So, look, man, this is a lady by the name of Kendra Rogers. She's an assistant principal in Corsicana, Texas, and ultimately she ended up trying to help a situation that was going on at her school. And she works at a behavioral school, like like where a lot of bad kids go, you know, whatever you want to call them. Um, Cause I don't want to talk bad about them cause I don't know, you know, the full extent of why they're there. I just know it's a behavioral school. And um, basically long story short, it was a situation that was taking place where a student was being very, very aggressive with another teacher and students and stuff like that. So she went down there to try to, you know, calm the situation down. But she ended up, you know, losing her eye in the midst of this whole situation. Yes, her damn eye. The damn student then knocked the eyeball out of socket to the point where now they tried to rush her back to the hospital. They put the eye back in there, but she would never be able to see out of it again as of now. They're saying that they don't see her being able to regain vision and that she is permanently blind in her eye now. Now, a lot of people are mad and a lot of people are trying to sympathize with the child. And I mean, I can understand both sides of the situation. I just hate that, you know, when you're trying to do something that you really, truly love and you end up, you know, going through something like this. You know, she has to love to be around students and kids and things like that to actually want to be a principal. You know what I'm saying? So for her to actually lose her eye like this is just crazy to me and i know it was painful because i didn't have various eye surgeries and i've had pain associated with these surgeries so to actually be under no anesthesia no type of hip or anything like that and actually get your eye yeah i said nah get your eye like that is crazy as hell but look i got a full video of her speaking about everything in totality with her family her husband and things like that and i also got another video with the news breaking certain things down so yeah let's go ahead and get into this and let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything let's go of course, the Kent ISD school administrator described in graphic detail the classroom attack that left her severely injured. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. Ken Rogers read a statement to the media taking no questions as she described being under attack from the moment she entered the classroom. Fox Force Sean Rapp in studio with her story. Sean. Steve, under attack from chairs being hurled, attempting to defend herself and another administrator. She was struck by an object in the face that's taking something precious both physically and emotionally. Kendra Rogers, holding hands with her husband Eugene, followed by family, walks into the Corsicana ISD boardroom, reliving August 15th, the urgent call for help at Collins Intermediate in a classroom for students with behavioral issues, the teacher trying to calm an out of control student. When I arrived, the teacher and students were outside the classroom. One student was holding his head, having been, having been a by the student remaining in the classroom. What she describes is a violent confrontation 
much more than what the district called a classroom disruption. He picked up a chair and acted as if he would throw it. He finally did throw it at me, but I caught it midair. He picked up another chair to throw at me when another assistant principal entered the room. I used the first chair to block the second. He picked up a third and threw it at the other assistant principal. And I used that initial chair to block the one that he threw at her. After blocking the chair thrown at the other assistant principal, he threw a wooden hanger at me, but I couldn't stop it fast enough. The hanger hit me in my right eye and knocked it out of the socket. I grabbed my that was pouring out of my and stumbled out of the classroom door. Rogers care flighted to Parkland, emergency surgery to try and save her eye. Doctors were able to reinsert my eye, however, they determined that I've been blinded and they currently believe that my damage is permanent. She says it's time for the state to reevaluate the education code and how marginalized students are disciplined. Overly aggressive students need services to meet their needs, but I do not believe the safety of other students and the educational staff should suffer. It's not the child's fault per se, uh, but it is the child's fault. It has to be dealt with. Uh, you can't just say, well, you know, this person has a mental condition, so we'll let it go. Attorney George Ashford yep. is not part of this case, but works in both the adult and juvenile system. Ashford says if the boy is charged, it would be a first degree felony assault. The boy was released to his parents and must stay in a restricted place. So let me know y'all thoughts and opinions on this. Do you think he should be charged or you think he should get some type of help that can actually possibly work on his, his mental health, you know? Now, I'm not trying to say that it's a reason why he should have did this because I definitely don't agree with it. And y'all already know I hate when people make excuses for mental health when, I, when in all actuality, a lot of people know what the hell they're doing, you know? And then you got to think of it like this. A lot of people don't like to, you know, say certain things because they're not going through the situation at hand you feel me if it was someone's child mother because she was an older lady well if it was your mother your grandmother auntie anything like that you would want something to happen to them as far as them getting some jail time or something you feel me especially knowing that it caused her pain and she can't see anymore so yeah people got to be more thoughtful and understand that man this is a whole human who lost their vision due to someone else's negligence even if it is a child you know but I can understand where a lot of people sympathize and things like that because they may have a child who has mental health issues or they just genuinely just sympathize with them wholeheartedly without any strings attached. I just feel like they, when it's a situation like this, you know, sometimes they need to be charged or something needs to happen that's a little bit more than just a little slap on the wrist. Let's get back into it though. There will have to be a determination made about his conduct that will include psychiatric evaluations. As severe as uh, his actions were, uh, as they've been described to me, and uh, knowing in fact that he does already have a, uh, a mental health condition, uh, Sean, I can probably almost say for sure, and his age, you know, him being so young, uh, that's probably going to be inevitable. The longtime educator says the governor and the legislature are complicit in what happened to happen to her because they failed to fund public schools adequately to meet needs and mandates. The amount of state money per student unchanged since 2019. I believe in public school education, but what happened to me should never happen to another educator. Thanks. Rogers and her husband, who's the Corsicana High School head football coach, taught in many public school districts, her injury impacting countless numbers. Doctors have said her blindness is permanent. She may lose her eye. She says she's praying and believing for a miracle that her eyesight will be restored. And those many former students believing with her. All right, Sean, I have a question quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, we didn't hear anything about this. It's like the school locked it down and almost seemed to mm -hmm. underplay it. She, her injuries are very serious. What was the story behind not saying anything or seeming to play it down? Which so is the district crazy. had no words today after she gave her statement. I can tell you only, Steve, there were HIPAA concerns about uh, her physical injuries. Uh, but other than that, the district called it a classroom disruption. Right. Clearly, it was much more uh, with right. another student being assaulted, also much more yeah. than a classroom disruption. Much more. Right. Sean Rabb, thank you. Okay, okay, this is her speaking, giving the full rundown on everything. So I will holler at y'all at the end of this video. I really want y'all to hear exactly what she's saying and where she's coming from. So yeah, y'all get into the video and we're gonna talk about it at the end of the video. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here. Thank you to Corsicana ISD for 
um, allowing me to use this space. Um, please understand that what I'm gonna say today uh, are my words. This is not coming from Corsicana ISD. Um, first, thank you all from the depths of my heart for all of your prayers. They have given me and my family strength during these very difficult and trying times. Thank you for all the meals, the cards, the ways you have um, assisted us financially and everything else you've done. And I'm so, so very, very grateful. I will be reading a short statement, but I will not be taking any questions. On Thursday, August 15th, during lunch, I heard our behavioral teacher call on the radio to administrators for assistance. When I arrived, the teacher and students were outside the classroom. One student was holding his head, having been, having been assaulted by the student remaining in the classroom. I entered where the student was still irate and found the room ransacked with overturned furniture. I knew I had to be as calm as possible. And I spoke lowly and slowly so as not to enrage him any further. He picked up a chair and acted as if he would throw it. He finally did throw it at me, but I caught it midair. He picked up another chair to throw at me when another assistant principal entered the room. I used the first chair to block the second. He picked up a third and threw it at the other assistant principal. And I used that initial chair to block the one that he threw at her. After blocking the chair thrown at the other assistant principal, he threw a wooden hanger at me, but I couldn't stop it fast enough. The hanger hit me in my right eye and knocked it out of the socket. I grabbed my face while blood was pouring out of my head and stumbled out of the classroom door. The nurse and 911 were called. I asked for my cell phone to call my husband to come get me, not realizing the extent of the damage. When paramedics arrived, they determined I would need to be airlifted to Parkland Medical Center in Dallas. I underwent surgery as soon as, soon as possible and doctors were able to reinsert my eye. However, they determined I had been blinded and currently believe that my damage um, is permanent. I will have to have an additional surgery to repair my eyelid because doctors are believing, um, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I underwent surgery as soon as possible and doctors were able to reinsert my eye. However, they determined that I've been blinded and they currently believe that my damage is permanent. I will have to have an additional surgery to repair my eyelid. And because, um, Doctors are believing my blindness to be perfect, to be permanent. Removing my eye may have to be an option. I'm still believing God for a miracle for restoration of my sight. My teaching career began here in Corsicana. This tragedy effect, it affected not just my husband, my children, my grandchild, my family, and my friends, but it has also negatively affected my school, my district, and my community. Because of the numerous districts in which my husband and I have worked and the thousands of students I've taught, the impact of my injury, it's far reaching. Chapter 37 of our Texas Education Code, which was originally created in 1995 to help protect our marginalized students with regard to how students are disciplined, may need to be reevaluated so that no paraprofessional, no teacher, or principal, simply put, no educator should ever be put in this situation. I fully understand education laws and the need for students to be educated with their peers. Chapter 37 may need to incorporate changes to, to address the mental, social, and emotional well-being of these students. As educators, we care about our students and their safety, but we, we must also care about the safety of our educational staff. Our safety is important too. We should never have to fear being in a classroom with an aggressive student everyone's protection is paramount. Overly aggressive students need services to meet their needs, but I do not believe the safety of other students and the educational staff should suffer. Lastly, Governor Greg Abbott holds some accountability in the safety of our students and our staff. For years, our students, our schools have suffered unfunded mandates which have included pay raises. Our basic allotment, which funds our day-to-day -day expenses, have not increased since 2019. 
even though we have had rising costs on absolutely everything, including new unfunded mandates. This is 2024. I'd like to quote a friend who gave me permission to use their words. Quote, if our students don't have what they need to be successful in Texas, this is not simply problematic. I hold that it is immoral. Texas has the ninth largest economy in the world, not the country, the world. Texas has over a $32 billion budget surplus, yet we spend the eighth least in terms of allotment per student in the U.S. Regardless of what you believe this says about our priorities as a state, this is a choice, and choices have consequences. Article 7, Section 1 of the Texas Constitution states a general diffusion of knowledge being essential to the preservation of the liberties and rights of the people, it shall be the duty of the legislature of the state to establish and make suitable provision for the support and maintenance of an efficient system of public free schools. I would argue that for Texas public schools in 2024 to be funded at 2019 levels is unsuitable provision to say the least. To that end, I believe the state legislature bears some degree of culpability when our schools, our public schools, struggle due to improper funding. Article 7, Section 3A of the Texas Constitution states, one fourth of the revenue derived from the state occupation taxes shall be set apart annually for the benefit of the public free schools. Without delving too deeply into the proverbial weeds, allow me to simply remind you of an earlier point. The state of Texas has a $32 billion surplus. I'm not a mathematician, but to have that abysmal level of spending in a booming state economy with a $32 billion surplus simply does not add up. Simply stated, Texas is vastly underfunded. According to a study conducted by the Kinder Institute, 73% of our Texas public school districts are underfunded. When schools are underfunded, all stakeholder, stakeholders suffer. It is important to, to point out that the decision to continue funding Texas public schools at 2019 levels in 2024 is a choice, and the collateral damage of Gover Governor uh, Abbott's choices include, but are not limited to, academic struggles, student discipline struggles, teacher retention challenges, stifled program advancements, loss of student enrichment programs, lessening of needed student supports, erosion of parent and external stakeholder trust, decreased student engagement, end quote. <sighs> to date, Governor Abbott has failed to release these funds because his political priority is school choice. And it seems he prefers to perpetuate a system of the haves and have nots. People fail to realize that public schools are required to accept any student, regardless of abilities. Private schools are not and do not. Public schools are required to have certified teachers. Private schools are not. Public schools are required to undergo state mandated, mandated testing. Private schools are not. These are just a few of the inequities. By further decreasing funds from, from public schools, which are already grossly underfunded, as though the, those of us in education already know, to give to those who can already afford to send their children to private schools is simply wrong. It's wrong to have so many mandates that make educating our public school children more, more difficult. It's wrong to take money from grossly underfunded schools. I've been in education for 30 years and I am a proud product of public schools. I believe in public school education, but what happened to me should never happen to another educator. Mr. Abbott, release the funds because you are also culpable for what happened to me. Thank you for your time.
All right, y'all. So look, I know y'all don't watch the video and things like that, but I do want to know y'all personal opinion. And like I said a while ago, you know, a lot of people try to put these type of situations to the side because they're not going through it or their family isn't going through it. And I mean, I understand that to a certain extent, but you just got to be mindful that people are out here putting their lives on the line to try to help other students and other people and things like that. And for them to actually have to go through certain like, the hell was it? But yeah, for them to have to go through certain things like this just is unacceptable in my personal opinion. Now, having behavior issues and stuff like that is something that some people can't control. But a lot of the times, man, when it's a crazy situation going on, people know what they're doing to a certain extent. You know it's not right. You know when people are trying to stop you and get you together. So, you know, I just sympathize with her, man. Especially with knowing how your eyes can affect your whole entire life is one of the things that I really, really, you know, can sympathize with her for. Damn, someone's in my little water. But, um... You're to lose your vision, bro. You know, you've been living your life this long, and then you go to school or you go to work and get your whole vision taken away by a damn student. It's crazy. But let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. If you made it to the end of this video, I definitely do appreciate y'all. Get y'all tickets while y'all can, and I will holler at y'all later on another video. All right.